Hello my little fuzzy bad butts. Last week in my video I mentioned that I was going to be talking about a paranormal topic for this week and um, I think next week I'll probably talk a little bit about crystals because I have had that requested quite a bit recently but uh, before I hop into my ghost stories and some good spooky fun, I really wanted to show you guys my friend and sister Laurel's house because it is really fucking cool. And I know that a lot of you guys got excited about my house tour and getting to see the inside of my house. And I thought that you guys would also thoroughly enjoy getting to see the inside of her house, specifically her dining room, because it is set up super super cool now laurel is more so like punk rock and i'm just more so the gloomy goth friend so i hope you guys enjoy this real quick tour of her dining room and after you guys get to see her epic little area of amazingness we will hop into the ghost story <laughs> it's a full party oh my god there's an arrow in this one yeah <laughs> oh my god. This is so rad. This was a hat I wore at an art something. Um, Austin and I were doing the Seven Deadly Sins, and so I wore that. And I was in platform, so I was about eight feet tall, including the feathers. That's so <laughs> rad. Did you wear this for the music video that we did for uh, Neck for Dancer? Yes. Yeah. yeah every, that's, the, that's the same one. It's about I thought it looked six familiar. Yeah. It's so yeah. cool. It's got to do a lot of things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the treasure chest. This is so cool. Whose idea was it? Was it just like... Richard. Richard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These sort of hats. And oh, I didn't hats. even notice all of that up top. Yeah. I found these plates. These are so cute. I got a set of them when I got Richard one. But they had like different assorted like skeleton key type things on them They're, like solid all glass and he loves uh doctor who so this is his homage to doctor who his little doctor who area it's and pretty cool <laughs> this is, i just there's so much to take in all the figures even this is probably my favorite <laughs> let's see if i can open this up copy the idea in my house and your random rooster in the photo frame. <laughs> right. Yeah. My friend Cox. Uh, we'll I get it. a little bit better without opening. <laughs> That's so cool. It's like a little shrine. <laughs> exactly. A little skull All shrine. Kinds of trinkets. Yes. So rad. Yeah. Officially the coolest dining room ever. <laughs> now it is time for some ghost stories. This story is based at my grandma and grandpa's farm. My papa had a very large farm with lots of cattle. He had about 200 cattle on his farm, maybe a little bit more, and it was like that for as long as I can remember, and he actually had several plots of land. He had several areas with at least 200 cows on each area of land. My papa was very, very good at what he did, and um, he was very passionate about um, raising cattle, having a farm, and just that whole lifestyle accompanied with that. So every summer, um, I would get to go and live with my grandma and grandpa for about a month, sometimes a little bit more, just depending on how homesick I got. But as I got older, I would spend more time at my grandma and grandpa's farm. Now, my grandma and grandpa's farm is very much out in the middle of nowhere. Specifically, it was um, out in this area called Henrietta. Oklahoma and there is a lot of farmers that live out there. Actually, it might have been in Alt Mulgee. I think it was Alt Mulgee, Oklahoma. Either way, it was in a small town and I would go out there every summer. Now, before 
about about whenever I was seven years old, I started having this reoccurring dream about playing in their backyard. And their backyard basically, um, right in the backyard, it was just this massive area that was a flat field with trees everywhere, and there was a little play set whenever I was much younger. And um, behind that, directly behind their backyard, was just this massive pasture where a lot of my grandpa's cattle were, and he also had about four different ponds on this pasture and directly behind the backyard was one of those ponds and just surrounded completely by trees and the woods. So in my dream, my reoccurring dream from my childhood, I would be playing in their backyard and a man completely cloaked in all black with his um, hood up and just, it looked like a trench coat with a hood basically. Couldn't see his face or anything. Would come out from the woods and he would grab me and I would fight against him and there would be a, a huge struggle and he would drag me out into the woods. And as soon as um, I was dragged out to the trees, everything would go completely dark. And by the way, this was all set at nighttime, so it was dark to begin with. And then he would drag me out to the woods where it got pitch dark, and then I would wake up. And I had this dream for about a month whenever I was seven years old. Needless to say, I was extremely terrified to go into the woods at night at my grandpa's farm, and even now into adulthood, I still get just a little bit freaked out at night in the woods due to that dream. It was very traumatic as a kid. But um, at this age of seven was whenever I started noticing that my grandpa and grandma's land was very spooky and very scary. <laughs> I would go out there and um, usually during the summer months whenever I got to spend time at their farmhouse. The house itself at night was very creepy and um, felt very ominous and I just had a heavy feeling around it. Now my grandpa and grandma had this house built according to the floor plans that my grandpa designed. So this house is a new house. It's not one that's an old farmhouse. It was new for its time. So it just didn't really make sense that there would be residual energy or there would be anything in the house to make it have this heavy feeling. But I remember one night in the house I was sitting, they had a living room and they had a den, which is basically just two living rooms, but they called it a den because that was my grandpa's living room and the living room was my grandma's living room. I, it's confusing, but that was, it was set up like an old style house. So I was in the den watching TV and I saw a shadow walk from the hallway into my grandma's living room. Curiosity, I thought my grandma or grandpa was awake, so I got up to go into that living room and um, I didn't see anybody, so I assumed maybe they walked to the kitchen. I go to the kitchen, no one's in there. And then I hear shuffling in the den. I go back in the den and no one's there. Um, I look down the hallway to see a shadow walking back to the bedroom. Go look in the hallway, no one's there. It freaked me out really bad. And I just kind of assumed that maybe my grandpa or grandma were sleepwalking. But um, that was the first instance where I got freaked out really, really bad. Now my eldest brother, James, would always, they had about, um, there was a three bedroom house. And um, one of the bedrooms my, grand, or my eldest brother, James, would always sleep in. And he told me that he would always have nightmares about multiple swords in that bedroom being attached in the ceiling and those swords coming down and stabbing him in his sleep. And he said that that was a reoccurring dream he would have about that bedroom. So not only did I have reoccurring nightmares about that house, but my eldest brother did as well. And, um, the, the reason I'm bringing up both of these things that happened was because one night my cousin was staying in one of those two bedrooms that were in that house and she heard a clawing on the window from um, inside her bedroom. 
and it woke her up and she said that the clawing sounded like it was ripping through the grating that was on the window because normally there's a black grating to keep bugs from flying into the room when you open up the windows and she said it sounded like somebody was cutting through that grating and trying to get to the window to break into the house. So she ran and grabbed my grandpa and my grandpa always slept with a gun next to his bed since they were out in the middle of nowhere. It was just safety precautions and also due to mountain lions and other wild animals um, like bears and things of that nature that could come up to the house just to kind of safety precautions. So my my grandpa grabs his gun and he goes out to check if somebody's trying to break into the house and he goes to the window to go up to it where that scratching was happening and um the the whole frame of the window was perfectly fine there was no sh signs of scratching the grating wasn't torn open and there also were no footsteps in the dirt and gravel that are near that window he couldn't find any traces of anything being there and there was no signs of something creating that noise so he goes back into the house and just tells my cousin that maybe she was dreaming and it was dream related and my cousin to this day gets goosebumps and freaks out whenever she tells the story because she says that the scratching was happening for a good while and she could hear the glass getting tapped and she could hear the glass being touched and messed with so um that that was very scary and my cousin's not someone who will say things to get attention. So it was just strange in general. Now my grandpa also had this um, monitor, like a sound monitor that he always had on in his farm, um, in the barn, in the, at his farm. I mean, in his barn he had a sound monitor that was connected to a system in his bedroom so he could hear things if um, somebody tried to break into his barn to steal equipment or to steal anything because he he had a very large operation of cattle lots of very expensive equipment in his barn um, things that people would try to steal if they could so he had this sound system set up and every night whenever he would go to sleep he would turn on the sound system or the um monitor so he could hear what was happening in the barn and if somebody broke in it would wake him up he told me him my grandpa and him both told me of this very freaky incidents that happened where they heard a woman and a man talking over the monitor in the barn late at night and my grandpa, of course, thought somebody had broken to the barn. So he gets his gun and he goes out to the barn to see what's happening. And he can't find anyone in the barn and he can't find um, any traces of a break-in where the uh, monitor would have picked it up. So he goes back to the farmhouse and this continues periodically for the following months where he just hears a man and woman having conversations and I, it kind of freaks me out talking about it now and it makes me get chills um, just because uh, <laughs> I, I later on would, the, 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 the man um, kind of would make himself be seen sometimes to me as a child and um, that same man was the man that I would see dragging me off into the woods whenever I was seven in that reoccurring dream. So um, fast forward a little bit and we were hiking on my grandpa's farmland and we actually found um, old stones that were carved in and my grandpa told me that he thought perhaps it was burial grounds. And um, he had told me that there probably were Indians that lived on that land before my grandpa purchased it long, 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 long ago that this would have been an ancient area where um, Indians, Native Americans lived and um, went about their lives. And he said that that was a burial ground for back then. So we kind of started assuming that what was haunting the house was um, Native American related and it was due to the fact that 
we were on their land and that the land belonged to them so it was kind of a way of saying that uh, we needed to show more respect or be more respectful of them so uh, my grandpa got to where he would talk about the burial grounds often and um, he would also talk about a girl that he saw often and he he had given her a name but I forgot the name that he gave her and he would describe to me what she looked like all the time and she always had feathers in her hair and he said that she was really really beautiful and had very very long hair and he would tease me about her often saying that I should go become friends with her and that I should play outside with her because we're around the same age and he was just my grandpa was an ornery person and he was teasing me but I also could tell that um, there in the stories he told me there was sincere like he was being sincere about this being a real girl that he would see and um, he also kind of hinted that those were the voices he was hearing in the monitor periodically from his barn um there there were more incidences at that farmhouse than i can even count but one of the things that really freaked me out was once my grandpa um he he got parkinson's later on in his age which parkinson's disease affects your brain and it makes you have shakes really bad like tremors and my grandpa's hand would shake and he he would try to make a joke out of it and like slap his hand whenever it would start shaking he'd like slap his hand and be like stop that and like joke around and kid about it but um unfortunately his parkinson's got uh more and more intense throughout the years and towards the end of him going downhill they, he got prescribed to this medication that would make him hallucinate and uh, see things. And he would always tell me about that same girl he told me about when he was much younger and I was much younger, that he would see the ghost of this girl. But anyways, one, one afternoon, whenever he was sitting on his back porch of the farmhouse, he asked me if I saw her and I didn't know what he was talking about and he, he asked me if I saw her over by the pond that was behind the house and um, he said that he could see her by the pond and she was telling him to come over there and come talk to her and I told my papa not to go over to the pond and to ignore her whenever he sees her because I didn't know how to handle the situation I was still young at that time i was around 18 um 17 or 18 whenever this was going on and uh it really freaked me out because he had always talked about this seeing this person since i was little and the fact that he said that he could see her by the pond motioning him to come over freaked me out as well because i i kind of i kind of felt this dread that she was going to try to drown him or like something was going to happen at that pond. So I warned my grandma about it and I told my parents about it as well. But um, he, he always still would tell me about this girl as his Parkinson's got worse and the hallucinations got worse. He also saw the man and he would fight with the man. Um, he would wake up fighting from his sleep. He would be um, on the couch in the den sleeping and he would wake up swinging and throwing his fists because he was fighting off the man and the man was trying to choke him out from in his dream and it was it was really terrifying and sad and it felt like i was really hopeless in that situation like i didn't know what to do for him um it's, this this story is taking a very sad turn but the, the basically, the farm and that farmhouse, they were always very ominous and there always was a dark energy and at night it was always very, very scary out there. And these were just a couple of the stories of things that were very strange that happen out at that farmhouse. And I have more, unfortunately, at the moment. I don't have any coming to my head. I just kind of told you guys the ones that are more prominent in my memory. 
but um, as I remember more stories from the farmhouse I'll be sure to tell you guys but I thought that these were very um, interesting and intriguing and spooky in general and I still have nightmares to this day about that farmhouse we uh, sold the farmhouse as my grandpa and grandpa my grandpa and grandma's health declined we did sell all the cattle and the farmhouse and the, the every basically the land everything of like involving that farm so even though it's no longer a part of our family's name or a part of our family I still have nightmares about that farm and I still have nightmares about the man at that house and um, I, I haven't really had any encounters with the girl, but I do have nightmares about the cloaked man and the man who lived out in the woods and that house still haunts me to this day. So that's just a fun little story from my childhood and ghost related. Next week I'm going to talk more about crystals and crystal magic and working with crystals just because that has been requested a lot. I will have more paranormal related things in the future and I'll do more so um, paranormal topics about weird news stories. I'll investigate some paranormal places around where I live and I will also be talking about paranormal equipment. Uh, my mother's dog, Bo, is visiting us. He's wondering what I'm doing right now because he's not used to being around someone talking to a camera. Hi Bo! Bo is Toby's little brother from the same litter and Bo is very timid and shy and he gets spooked super easily so that's why his eyes are really big right now because he has no idea what I'm doing. I'm just talking into thin air and I'm sure it's freaking him out really bad. I love you Bo, it's okay. Everything is fine. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I put out new videos every week and I will see you again next week. Bye! Choose, choosey. Feel free to comment down below anything spooky that you've been experiencing and we can share some spooky stories. Also, feel free to comment your insight and what videos you would like to see in the future. Love you! Bye! Mwah! Choosey! He has suscited for us a potente nella casa di Davide suo servo. Come aveva promesso per bocca di sui santi profeti che il Signore ha voluto insegnare in mille terreni ancora a